Hi Flossy friends, it's Jen from Delicious Threads and today is November 9th, um, 2018. Uh, October was a super busy month. I did do a bunch of stitching, not as much as I would have liked as usual, um, but I worked on a bunch of different projects because I was doing dark October stitching and I had set up my projects on a wheel and so I stitched on a few things and then a couple things came up more than once and I had a project that I wanted to finish so I worked on that one first until I was done before I started spinning the wheel. So I didn't work on new stuff every day, um, but I did have... I think one new start from the October, like dark October stitching, um, and a bunch of whips I worked on. So to start with, uh, October was so busy. I mentioned in my last video that I was doing a bunch of volunteering and I was helping organize and run the bake sale portion of my son's fall fest at his school. And all of that just took so much more time than I thought it would. And I was so tired and run down at the end of it that I got sick and I still have like a little bit of a scratchy throat and like a lingering cough and I'm ready for it to go away. I don't like feeling gross. It makes everything so much harder. Um, so that's kind of it for life update. It's kind of same old, same old. So for projects, the first thing I did was um, I actually was pulling out some old projects that I had finished before uh, and that I wanted to FFO and um, one of them I pulled out was actually an embroidery project and I can't remember which year I stitched this. It was last year or the year before. Um, this was a freebie pattern. I don't remember where I got it. I'll try to look it up and then if I find it I'll put it in the description box below. Um, so when I pulled this out I already had the hoop painted. I painted it black. Um, and everything was stitched except I had left the inside of these sunflowers empty and I had all like thought before that maybe I'd want to fill them in but I wanted it to be done so uh, I just left it as is and when I pulled it out to possibly finish it off like finish the back so I could hang it I saw it I was like you know what I really want to put in some French knots so I filled in both of these sunflowers with a ton of tiny French knots you can even see like how much they stick up off the fabric there I originally planned to go ahead and finish the back of it um, to make it all nice and neat and then things just got really crazy with doing stuff for um, the fall fest that I didn't do it in time. So I might still do it soon. I had been meaning to make like a tutorial type video to show how I like to finish the back of my hoop projects. Um, so maybe I'll use this one to show you. I have a couple other hoops that I need to finish too. So maybe I'll pick a couple of different ways that I enjoy doing it. One thing I do really like, is, like I said, is painted hoops. And sometimes I stain hoops. Um, sometimes I will paint them and do like a sparkly paint over the top to give it a little extra something. So I have a few things that I can share. We'll see if I ever get to that. And the project I showed you last time that I had been working on and I was determined to finish was my tombstone sampler. And it is done and I love it so much. Um, I made a couple of changes and I think last time... Um, I didn't show you this part, but I think it was the, I think it was these little parts of the swirls, the little ones that are on top, and the way that it was charted was like super blocky and looked weird, and so I charted it to be like a little more flowy, like it seemed more, um, I don't know, it seemed more natural, especially compared to the other parts of the like viney, leafy parts, it just didn't really seem to fit, so I tweaked those a little bit. And then I was telling you that the skulls that were charted were very angular. They were both basically like diamonds and then some little uh, bones sticking out of it. So I recharted those as well. And then I had also mentioned the year. And I don't remember if anybody gave me info. I said, like, if anybody knows, like, what the significance of 1721 might be, let me know. And I don't remember if anybody said anything. But well, when I got to that part, I did some research on this sort of winged skull, or they also call it a death's head. Um, like what, the, like when they started using this and the significance of it. And I went down a rabbit hole looking at like older um, tombstones. And I found a chart that discussed kind of the, um, 
the change in popularity of different tombstone toppers. And this particular tombstone, the winged skull, started being used a lot more regularly It's starting in 1720. And then it changed to the like angel head with wings um, next. And then there was another one. And so it kind of showed you like these years to these years. It was super popular. And there are some times where it like overlapped. But so the 1721 is probably because that was right at the beginning of when this particular style of tombstone topper was widely used. So I decided to go ahead and stitch it with 1721. And this was stitched using a um, black silk from Silks For You. And somebody in the last video, I'm really sorry, I don't remember who it was, um, they said that they wanted to know what it was and I gave them a link and there was one uh, Hank left and she bought that one. Um, I think this is probably a standard color on Silks For You site though, um, in their Etsy shop. So you could probably get it again. Um, the message about what the color was, and I even put a link, uh, is in the comments from the last video. And I am totally blanking again on what the fabric is called. I did this in the last video too. I really should have looked it up. It is a Pictureless Plus fabric. I believe it's 32 count Lugana. Um, this is my favorite gray that they have. I can't believe I forget. I will put it here. Sorry. Um, so I'm really glad that one's finished. Oh, so I might try to do this as like, um, like a stand up or like kind of like a block finish that we're seeing with a lot of things, but not quite. Like I think I might actually stuff it, but I'll make it out of fabric and I'm going to do a tombstone shape. Um, and I, I just ran out of time to try to figure that out. So maybe next year I'll try to make this into a stand up tombstone. Um, and I will put the info down below for where to get this chart if you want it. It was um, it's a dark crosses pattern, and I bought it on Etsy, but I didn't buy it from them. I bought it from, like, I can't remember. I'll link it down below. I don't want to say the wrong thing. Um, I'm not going to do these in order because I don't remember what the order was. Uh, I worked on my primitive Ouija board by Clouds Factory. And I had messed up and I commented about how I messed up. I knew that some of these are not spaced right and I just kind of fudged it. But this whole thing was off. I needed to bring it up like, did I need to bring it up or down? Um, I think I needed to bring it down a couple of rows, like one row. And um, I had also miscounted this top line. So this stuff was shifted over, um, I think not far enough. And so all of the stitching was wrong and I finally figured out what the problem was and I tore out everything I had here and then this is what I was able to restitch. This is also a Pictureless Plus fabric. I also don't remember what it's called. And I believe it is 32 count Lugana. I'll put what it is. I need to keep the little slips. I do that, like I have this one that fell out of another project um, and I keep trying to remember to put things back in the bags, but then I lose them. Actually, is it in here? It is not. Okay, I'll have to look it up. Uh, I had, when I was spinning my wheel, those projects came up. Actually, the first day I was planning to stitch my tombstone sampler, and then it came up on my spinning wheel anyway. So it worked out, and I was like, I told myself, I'm just gonna stitch this until it's done. I think it took me like half the month to get it done because I was busy doing other things. Uh, one of the other projects that came up was a Spirit and Mandala by Ink Circles, and this is what it looks like finished. And I had very little done before. Um, I think. I had like the bottom here and then this coming up. I think that's all I had. And so this is what I stitched. And I think I did a couple nights of this one. And this is also a picture of this plus fabric in 32 count Madonna. And I don't know. The, oh, it's Voodoo. I did keep this slip in there. So this one's going to be fun. I'm going to be stitching all four of these in the series, and I used similar colored fabrics to what they have in their example stitches. Um, 
I got a second one of the mandalas. I got a ghostly mandala, also by Ink Circles. And I don't have the original pattern in here, so I can't show you what it looks like. I'll insert a picture of what it looks like finished. And this is where I'm at. Um, again, I don't remember how much I had. I think I had maybe like one ghost and like this little part here, but I really can't remember. And this is also Pixels Plus. I believe this is the same. Oh, you know what? I have a slip in here. 32 count Lugana in pewter. It's not the same because the other one is not pewter. So I decided to stitch all of these using Anchor Black and I really like the coverage, especially on 32 count. I have not started the other two mandalas yet, but I will one day. Uh, one of my new starts is a second version of Fat Bat Cat. So I stitched my first one using the called for colors on Glacier by Pictures Plus, and it's kind of like a an aqua color fabric, and that one was what I stitched for myself. And then I decided I wanted to stitch a second one, and this is on a, um, a sparkly natural linen. And I can't, I think it might be 28 count, but I can't remember. And um, originally I was thinking I might do this in just regular DMC, but I was looking at my specialty fat or throat bleh, floss, and I think I have enough to do it again, so um, I did decide to use that. And this one's gonna be for my sister. She has an orange tabby, so I think she'll really like this. And I really love the color of the wings. I think it's called Black Crow, and it's like a navy and black, and it's so pretty. So I got a lot done on this because this was a new start. I worked on that a bunch of days and then I made it my um, car project. So I stitched on a lot and the pickup line waiting for my son. I had another new start. You've probably been hearing about um, this project a lot. It's the Siach Along. This is the sixth year they've done it. Um, I did it last year for the first time and I have almost finished it because it's you personalize the last part of them. And um, I finally decided what mine is gonna be. Uh, so the next time I work on that, I'll definitely show you and you'll know what I'm doing. So this year's St. Uh we just got, we didn't just get it. We got the fourth pattern on Saturday, or Friday actually, they did it a day early. Um, and then, but they usually release the new patterns on Saturdays. And we've had four released already, so I believe we're getting pattern five um, tomorrow. And um, if you want to join in, it's free. They do have, like, it's kind of like donation wear where you would, like, donate a certain amount to be able to use somebody's software. It's like that with the patterns, too. So um, in each pattern release, they have, like, a link where you can donate. And you can donate however much you want. Um, so it's a really good way to kind of support them so that they can keep giving these patterns out for free. But if you think you might want to do it, you should join and save the patterns, like even if you don't think you can start it yet, or if even if you get to the end and you see what it looks like at the end, they give you a little bit of time to make sure you have everything downloaded because then they take it away and it's not available anywhere. Um, and every now and then they'll do like an amnesty day. So last year they had a one day sale where you could buy the old patterns. But in general, they're not available after uh, the stiatch along is done and they take the patterns down. So um, if you think you might want to do it, go ahead and get the patterns and save them. So this is mine so far. Um, I completed through week three. I actually didn't start stitching it until week three because I could not decide on my fabric and what flosses I want to use. Um, it's totally up to you. This particular uh, pattern this year, it only uses four colors. And they do have a couple suggested palettes to use, but most people are kind of doing their own thing. And originally I was thinking I would just stitch it on white and pick some um, DMC and see how, see if that lighting's better. Yeah, I keep shadowing my face. Um, and I just changed my mind so many times that I eventually settled on this. This fabric is, I still have this, uh, 32 count Lugana and Jazz from Pictures Plus. I have a lot of Pictures Plus fabrics because I took advantage of uh, their Christmas in July, which they're not doing anymore, um, but I have a lot of their fabric. And uh, these are just DMC, and I'll put 
down here which colors I'm using because I don't remember off the top of my head. So each week you get a bit of the pattern and it's a mystery. Like you really have no idea what it is. You don't know what the theme is. All you know at the beginning is how big it is and what colors to use. Um, and then like I said, in this one you kind of can pick your own colors. And week three was everything you see here except that little... I'm guessing it's a leaf, maybe, or like a petal for a flower, I don't know. Um, so that is the only part of part four that I stitched so far. Uh, I'm hoping maybe I can get caught up tonight. I probably won't get caught up tonight. Um, I'm hoping to be caught up early in week five so that oh, I'm not dragging my feet. But yeah, I started this one in week three and I was just so excited once I started stitching on it that I didn't stop. But it's good because now I'm caught up and I am in love with these colors. I wasn't sure at first and I kept going back and forth and asking for advice. And actually this uh, kind of turquoise color, this dark turquoise, I had like a, um, it was a dark but like kind of a brighter shade of blue that seemed very like jewel toned also because I was kind of going for jewel tones. And then this is like a charcoal gray. It kind of looks black there. Um, and once I had stitched everything else, I just didn't think the blue was going to look good. And so I pulled out that turquoise and I was like, okay, this is the right one. So that is my other new start since the last time we talked. So those are all my projects. Lots of stuff that um, is still in the works. I had the one major finish with the Tombstone Sampler and I'm so excited that that one's done. Once I started really stitching on it, I just did not want to put it down. It's a really fun project. Um, November's not really going to be less busy because we host Thanksgiving and this year my mother-in-law is coming too and we just moved in the house in April so this is going to be her first time seeing it. Uh, so I really want to try to finish unpacking some lingering boxes and really organizing things because like my pantry is not organized at all. I don't think my the way I put stuff away in the kitchen makes sense. Um, and then it's mostly just having like boxes out and my craft stuff. So the like office craft room is totally taken over by my stuff and like we have great tables now and I've been trying to keep it clean but once I start working on a project I just make a mess. So I need to try to put all that stuff away in an organized way so I can find things again. So some of my November is going to be taken up with that. Um, and then December I think should relax a little bit because we're not hosting anything for Christmas. Um, we'll be like geared up for Christmas though so we'll have like decorating stuff to do but like fun things that um, are going to be more exciting than making sure your house is ultra clean and that you have uh, all of the parts of the house working correctly because there's still things that we're fixing that were left over from the last owners. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. Uh, last time I also talked about some bags that I made, some project bags. And if you're interested in project bags, you could go back to my last video and look at them. Uh, they are all Harry Potter themed fabrics and I have like fabric bags and the vinyl front bags as well. And I showed the different sizes that I had made and the different fabrics that I used. And um, last time I said I was going to try to get the bags posted within like the week after and I said please don't hold me to that and then things got crazy. So that obviously didn't happen. Um, but on Monday... I just told myself, the this needs to happen. I need to get the sale going. So I posted like sales happening in one hour and it forced me to actually do it. So right now there are Harry Potter project bags in my Facebook group. There will be a link down below if you want to go check it out. Um, I know Michelle Bendy Stitchy talked about it and I think um, that was awesome. I have a bag for her already too, uh, but I think she said something about how they were all gone. They're not actually all gone. I do have some still, so if you're interested, even if you just want to take a look to see what's there, like go pop in. The sale ends this coming Monday, so Tuesday morning. Whatever is still there um, that's unclaimed, I'm going to take down. There's a chance I might list them on Etsy at some point, but I will have to put them up at a higher price to cover the extra Etsy fees. Um, but yeah, so sales done on Monday for those Harry Potter bags. And I do have some fabric set aside for like some fall and like winter Christmassy type fabrics that I might make bags out of. I really do want to get back to making needle minders at some point. But right now, um, making bags where I can just make them when I have time and then 
post them when they're already done and they're just ready to ship and then being able to mail them out right away without having any extra work uh, is really appealing to me because I get to do something but I don't have to um, set aside a bunch of time to make things before I can send them. Like they're already made and ready to go. So I might do another bag sale before starting to sell needle miters again because November is going to be so busy, but I really need the outlet of being able to uh, be creative. And I love stitching and I'm going to stitch, but since I finally have space in my house to have a sewing machine set up full time, um, it's really fun to be able to sew whenever I want because I didn't really have that ability before. Also, I mentioned in my last video that I was going to get a new sewing machine and it finally got sorted out. I ended up having to get a different machine than I originally had ordered, but I have the machine. I've been playing with it and it's going to make sewing up bags so much easier and probably a lot more fun. So I'm excited to give it a try because I've only used it to make a couple of small projects, um, but I'm going to use them for some bags and see how much easier it is. So that's my update. Um, thanks for hanging out with me. And then also, I noticed partway through this video that those uh, maracas kind of look like boobs. So McKenna, boobs. Uh, very large nipples too. So I'm just gonna cover this up again. Anyway, uh, I hope to see you again soon. I would like to record more often, um, but I just have to go with the time that I have available. So until next time, happy stitching.